and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of setting deadlines on your goals. We all have dreams and goals we want to accomplish. Many times, some of those goals we set for ourselves get postponed or never happen because we didn't prioritize them with a set and clear deadline. Life is busy and each day brings on new opportunities and even challenges. Life can sometimes pass us by, which is why it's important to set a deadline to your goals to make sure we make them a reality. By setting a deadline on our goal, we have something to work towards. It motivates us and sets a fire in our hearts to work towards our dreams. As with all timelines, of course, it's important to be realistic and place deadlines that are achievable. Putting deadlines even on small accomplishments makes it more likely to happen because we put a timeline on it. Remember, without a deadline, it's just a dream. With a deadline, we make it a reality. Joining us now is Abyss Mohamed from Operation Ramze. The organization is currently delivering care packages for seniors and those in need of food during this COVID-19 crisis. Abyss, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. So let's talk about all the amazing work you're doing right now with Operation Ramze. Let's talk about your organization. Basically, we started Operation Ramze. It uh, initially was to help seniors, to feed seniors at our home that are too afraid to go out and get food because they're older and this affects them the most. So when I initially came up with the idea, it was just to send food boxes that would hopefully keep them at home for 12 to 14 days. And volunteer, we, we buy food, package it in boxes, and then deliver right to their homes and knock on the doors, keeping everybody safe. Mm -hmm. And I know this organization was named after your mother who would feed uh, the needy in your home country of Lebanon. Let's talk about the importance of following in her footsteps. Yeah, so my mother, we were born in a, in a small village in Lebanon. It doesn't do very well. There's a lot of poor people there. And every time my mom would go back to Lebanon, she would just gather us all together and say, we have all these families to feed. And she went almost every year, every two years. And when she didn't go, she would still manage to send money to feed all these families that she had. So we kind of grew up with that. My mom passed away last July, and I was planning to go back to Lebanon in her honor. She's buried there, and I was going to go back. And they've had the financial crash, so those things are really bad. So I was planning to go back there with, you know, X amount of money and feed as many people as I can. And then the coronavirus came, and I have an aunt here that lives in Canada who's also older. She's a senior, and she takes care of a paraplegic, you know, son that she has. And I was just, my mom kind of came to me and said, you know, take care of your aunt, take care of the seniors that you know. So I started calling them and, and talking about what groceries they needed. And I thought, how many people were no sh you know, in, their, in their shoes? So that's where the idea came from. So instead of going to Lebanon, I just bought a lot of food at wholesale prices. And my suppliers were kind enough to give me a lot more. You know, they donated a lot, of, a lot of boxes. And initially, I was honestly thought, you know, I'd, I have this much money to, to spend. I would last for two, three weeks. I did my good for the day. I would just go home. And then every time I'd go to stop, we just get these letters or more people asking for food and, and we just kept on going. Mm -hmm. And I know you put 40,000 of your own money to start this organization. It's a risky time for everyone. So what made you want to take that risk right now? I was actually planning on going to Lebanon and doing the same thing. So I actually spent more than that since then, but I was planning on going to Lebanon and spending that much money to feed a whole village. And I was going to buy as much as I can. So I actually had a lot of that money in my mom's honor you know, to go back and feed the village. And so we, we bought food with it and we're running at zero cost. So it's amazing. It's all completely volunteer driven. Um, it's amazing. The volunteers are paying for their own gas. They're showing up in their own and they're taking boxes in their cars and they're taking a list of addresses and they drop them off. And this is way bigger than me. It's just, I think it's all about the volunteers. And I think there's so many people that want to help. Like, as I look down right now, the volunteers packing boxes and bring this Lovely woman just showed up in her car. She's got a, she's opened up her hatchback and she's filling up with boxes. She's got a big smile. She's thanking me. I'm thanking her over the boxes. And she's actually thanking me for giving this platform to actually do something. And a lot of people just want to help in any way they can. And I'm sure it's so rewarding for you to see the impact that you're, you're having on people. Let's talk about that and the importance of giving back for you. It, it's really, really changed me. So I've been a businessman for a long time. I, work seven days a week, I have multiple business on many fronts and you get caught in that and you forget about what's really, really important. And when you start delivering boxes and seeing how people are living, 
And when you hear stories of some seniors having eaten in two days, or you get these crisis calls from single mothers that are hiding in church basements and they, have, they don't have any food for their kids, it really, really moves you. And it, it gives you, you know, you know, just a momentum to keep going. And every time I go to give up, I either go deliver a box and it kind of rejuvenates me, mm-hmm. or I read an, a, a letter that was sent to us and it kind of is like, no, you can't stop. You got to keep going no matter how tired you are, no matter how tired the team is. You just keep going. It feels like you just have this purpose on your shoulders. I can't even describe it. And I have a photographer who I used to use in my magazine as a, a really renowned photographer, fashion photographer. And he volunteered last week and he said he's never, I think he clocked 32,000 steps in one day. And, just the, and, and he goes, I've never walked so much. I've never carried so much in my whole life, but I've never felt better. Because I just feel that like he's becoming coming ever since. And it's pretty amazing. And let's talk about some of the crisis kits and the food that you're delivering and to who, because I don't think people realize that there are people out there that don't have food. <laughs> you know, not everyone has the luxury to go to the grocery store. So let's talk about that and the people that you are feeding. It's, it's amazing because I never knew that there was this many people that needed food. So when I first came up with the idea was to feed seniors that were afraid to go and, and get food. And I thought some would be needing food for financial reasons, and I thought others just didn't want to go to stores. And then we started getting calls from single mothers, from families, from low-income areas, from people that have mental health issues, crisis centers. So we're delivering food to so many different crisis centers, shelters, and it just feels like, wow, there's just so many people. So people can log on to our website, they can give us their address. A lot of people actually call us, and we were doing in Ottawa at the Wavy in one of my restaurants, the phone was going nonstop. And I thought, would these people stop calling? We're closed, we're not allowed to open. So I picked up the phone one day and I started yelling, like, we're closed, what don't you understand? And, and they're like, are you the people giving food? And I said, yes. And she said, I'm really hungry and I don't have the internet, I'm sorry. So we actually established a phone line for that reason. And so we get either phone calls or, and then we get a lot of people reaching out to us too from different crisis centers and single mothers and stuff. And we try to help them out. But it's, it's amazing when you see, when you actually deliver boxes and you hear the stories, it really moves you. And how can our viewers, how can I, I know the first thing when I told my parents about this story, they're like, how can we donate? So how can the community donate and help your cause right now? I mean, they can help in so many different ways. They can help us get food. So uh, we, we're getting people donating socks to us, bananas, bagels, there's bakeries giving us bagels and bread. There's people giving us bananas and vegetables. There's people that are volunteering to come and pack boxes so we can use help that way. We need volunteers out you know if they have some spare time come and pick up some boxes and drop them off and if people can give then they can go on the gofundme page and they can donate and we have zero expense like i say every single person's working out of the kindness of their hearts and we're using all of that money to buy food at wholesale prices so you want to volunteer come volunteer if you're in a position to donate money you can donate on our gofundme page if uh, you want to help us get socks or anything or, or food we just there's so many ways that, that you can help but you know whether we get food donated to us that we can put in the boxes whether we get money or whether we get volunteers those are the ways that we can people can help us and how would you encourage our viewers to give back because i think that kindness is so important right now and seeing stories like yours of organizations that are giving back so even if it's a small act of kindness how would you encourage our viewers to give back honestly i, I spend about four hours of my day now every day just texting people and checking up on them and i think if if you're able to give financially give if you're able to pick up some groceries for seniors that live around you do that but i think also there's a lot of lonely people around that are really stressed out and just calling and saying hello is is pretty how are you doing so i spend a few hours every day just texting a lot of different people how are you doing how are you holding up keep smiling so that, that, I think the world needs a lot of love right now. There's a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of stress. And I'm just calling people to encourage them, like, hey, this will, this will be okay. And I think that's what people need right now. So doing that, I think, is amazing. Yeah, definitely. I think everyone's mental health is a little bit off right now, just because, you know, we're stuck in the house. How are you doing? Because you have a lot on your plate right now. I mean, you're delivering food every day, you're with the volunteers. So how are you doing personally? I'm really tired. <laughs> I can imagine. I'm really yeah. tired and, and I'm really tired and I try to keep the team motivated. And sometimes I stay up at night because you, you see the demand. I'm in a very 
special situation where I see the demand of food coming into me. So a lot of people reaching out to me. So I, I get a lot of emails and I get a lot of Facebook messages of people. How can I get food? How can I get more food? So you get that demand. They're reaching out to me directly. So you get the demand, but then you say, how can I feel this demand? How can I get the money to feed all these people, right? So it kind of keeps you up at night and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's really tough. It's a real tough not to deal with every day. And we have to give credit, of course, to the volunteers. I know Mitch is a friend of mine and I know I see all of the posts he's posting, uh, giving back. Let's talk about the volunteers and of course the people that are do donating food. Oh my God, I, I think it's not, this is the volunteers are way bigger than me. God bless every one of them. We've had volunteers that come every single day you know, last week we had to go to London, Ontario with, with 800 boxes of food. And, you know, in a very, very short span of time, we had to pack the boxes, load them into one big reefer. Then another reefer showed up, we had to load them into that reefer and go carry them. And it was just amazing how fast we worked, how hard we worked. And the volunteers, God bless them all. Mitch is driving around every day, picking up bananas, oranges, every day. He won't even take any gas money. He's just driving around all over town. The volunteers are coming in every day working. And we had one senior that reached out to me and she donated $500 and she sent me a note saying, I don't have any money to donate. She was taking money on her credit cards and she thought that it would take her two years to get the $500 that she was donating. But she, you know, we were doing that, that, oh my God. I almost felt like giving it back to her. Honestly, I was, you know, take it back. But the, the all of the volunteers are amazing. Every one of them, we have people that come pick up boxes every day to deliver. People are coming pack boxes and just to see the goodwill in people is just amazing. And you know, I'm sure there are viewers out there that might be embarrassed to ask for a crisis box or ask for food and they might be struggling. So what would you just say to someone that's watching that doesn't have food or doesn't have the money to buy groceries? Um, how can they actually get a crisis kit from your organization? Yeah, so they can go on Operation Z and just give us their address and we'll, we're more than happy to deliver. And no one should be, you know, these are tough times for everybody. They really, really are. No one should be embarrassed and, and stuff. No one should be embarrassed. Also, if you need food, we'll get it to you. Just please get us an address and tell us how many you are and we'll get you food. And that's what we're here for. And where can people connect with your organization and you on social media? It's OperationRumZ.org. And on that, there's a GoFundMe page. They can send us messages. So people can, if they go on operationrumz.org, they can volunteer to help either deliver food or help us pack boxes. They can donate on our GoFundMe page. They can also go online and tell us if they need food as well, just to fill out their address and then we'll deliver it to them the next day. And I forgot to ask you, what comes in the crisis kit? Yeah, so we have uh, non-perishables. We have bread, we have rice, we have granola bars, we have soup. Uh, we have a lot of vegetables, fruits and vegetables as well. We have beans and we have pasta, tomato sauce and milk. So it's and also we're adding now chocolate bars and chips and also uh, cupcakes and stuff and brownies to cheer the kids up. I'm really worried about the kids, you know, yeah, they're inside. For sure. And some we go to these areas where there's these large families living in two bedroom apartment and I look at the kids and I'm like, oh my God, you know, I got to get them something. So when we got brownies, I was so excited and we got chips, and we got chocolate bars and now we got toys as well which is great. They tell us that the children, we can deliver toys based on their age, brand new toys, which just puts a huge smile on my face. You know? and I remember going to this one area where we brought a lot of toys with us and I could just see the parents' eyes lighting up with these brand new toys. It was just, yeah. it was just, it was beautiful. I just, I would just say to all the viewers, just take a bit of your time to reach out to your friends and your family, just to say hello and see how you're doing. And just, I think spread some love and goodwill. And I think the world really needs that right now. I agree. Abyss, thank you so much for being on the show today and keep up the amazing work that you're doing because the world needs it. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Have a wonderful day. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Join us live through Facebook and Twitter.